Special thanks to our promotional partners at the American Philatelic Society. The APS is the largest stamp collecting organization in the world, supporting collectors of any level worldwide. For more information about membership and APS services, visit stamps.org. I'm Charles Epting from H.R. Harmer in New York City. And I'm Michael Cortese of Noble Spirit in Pittsfield, New Hampshire. And this is Conversations with Philatelists, part two of us telling people uh, what it is we do for a living after over <laughs> a year of having had a podcast. Right, <laughs> right exactly. So last week, Michael, I broke down four items, how I describe them, what resources I use, what goes into an actual auction description. Um, this week, it's your turn to sort yeah. of give people a look behind the scenes. What happens when a collection comes into Noble Spirit's office? What are you, uh, you going to be sharing with us? So I've got a, uh, a U.S. collection here, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we break things out, what condition is – condition is always important in collections – and individual stamps more so, I'd say. So for putting together a collection or breaking apart a collection, um, what we're going to be looking at is whether or not the condition is good enough to pull a collect to pull the individual item out or to leave it in the collection. So I've got a U.S. collection here. It looks like it has some duplicates. I've only kind of looked at it. I haven't looked at the whole thing yet. Um, so where can I go to go through this together and evaluate the collection, look at what needs to be pulled out, what can be left in, and how to better evaluate material, what to look for as far as... And ultimately, how to make somebody the most money. Yes. Yeah. How to maximize the potential of your collection or collection you purchased, inherited, uh, anything like that. We're going to look at um, how to how to sell your own stamps and how to price them, I guess. Fantastic. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to pop over here. I got the, the collection here. And then, um, yeah, we'll kind of go through this together. Excellent. So let me do that. I'm still going to be standing here, and I'm going to spotlight this here. So... Uh, as you can see, I took it out, out of the lighthouse binder. We've got uh, United States of America, stamp album. Stays pretty on, uh, on par there. So That looks like a Pomeroy's. <laughs> probably because it is. Um, these are always on, on thin paper. These guys, um, I Pomeroy letter, letter Express. So these are these are quite popular. They were issued in um, full sheets of fifty, I believe. Um, but as always with kind of um, locals and early issues, forgeries and reprints are abound. So I think they did do a reprint of this. Is that correct? They did. They, they did. did. Um, you got to look for that. When pulling this out, this was not um, what we're going to be focusing on, though. So, in the beginning here, we've got a US-1 on cover, and then a PF cert for the 9X1. So, we'll look at the 9X1. So, we talked briefly in, in your episode about double-checking that the certificate is the same as the actual stamp right off the bat us 9x1 it looks like same pen cancel um if we're not going into further inspection here it looks like it's the exact same stamp so this is a 2004 cert for a pf um 2004 pf certificate so this kind of item is something that you definitely want to try and pull out of the collection because i believe they catalog for around 600 that's about right um they don't really in the condition that it's in it's not really going to make or break the collection it's not going to make the collection itself more valuable and a, a phrase you're going to hear a lot of from me talking is is it's going to get lost in the collection so it $600 catalog value probably sell for around 200 
250, 300 in, in this condition. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, it's it's something that I definitely pull out of the collection as well as this US number one on, I had said cover before, this is actually a folded letter. Um, so US number one on folded letter to Stockbridge, Mass. Looks like uh, October 10th, Boston cancel, five cents. It's very faded. And the one itself is kind of cut in at the top here and definitely on the left, the only margin being on the right hand side. So this is something where depending on the value of the collection, it might be worth considering leaving in the collection. Typically US number ones on folded envelope could bring around 150 or hundred dollars if there's nothing super significant with them however this one is in in I'd say poor to average condition yeah yep well, I okay. didn't as you were looking for, yes <laughs> um yeah cut cut in on a couple of sides yeah. um you know not not the cleanest letter sheet not yeah. the not the most exciting vibrant cancellation you know it's a bit uh, uh yeah so this is this is something I, I might consider leaving in the collection because it can definitely boost the overall appeal of the collection. When you tell somebody there's a U.S. number one on cover inside of a collection, that gets their attention really quickly. Yes, exactly. Um, that's that's a highlight of the collection, and outside of the collection, it's it's not going to um, to realize enough to make it kind of worthwhile. Um, you got some early items on a alpha bomb card here that looks like a mint. I'm not going to try and plate uh, one cent Franklin on the air right now. I'm not going to try and plate it uh, over <laughs> Zoom. Yeah. Um, I'll pull these out of the way. So it's significant items. Oh, let me pull that out. That's fake. Or it's a. You got to be careful with those too. Um, I don't know where that went. This, while looking genuine, is just a uh, piece of paper. So in the beginning here, first row, you got a number one. You got a number four, which they put three under. And and a couple for people who don't know, the number yeah. four is the eighteen seventy five reproduction of the uh, of the uh, U.S. eighteen forty seven issue of the yeah the two. So the four. This is the four. I actually have a three right here. Um, that should be in that spot with a 2008 PSE certificate. So we had spoken in Charles' uh, episode about PSE graded certificates. This is not a graded certificate. This is just a regular certificate. So SMQ and the website we had mentioned before doesn't really apply to this stamp or this certificate here. Um, however, in nice condition, I don't know if I'd send this out because threes always do look very vibrant and bold, usually with wide margins as well. So I'd say this is about um, an average to a fine for a three. This is something where looking at the, the rest of the collection if you're going to leave this in, you have to leave that in. So typically, and I, I don't, I can't speak for, for you, Charles, but, but we try to sell threes and fours together because they I were issued to together. That. Yep. Well, you know, there are people who will have one and not the other, but generally, if somebody wants um, the reissues, the reissues, the, it, it's it's easier to buy a three and a four together, just like it can be easier to buy a one and a two together. Yes. So those items we may pull out specifically to just put with each other, or if we're going to leave, see, that fell off the page, or if we're going to leave them in the collection, um, they'd be another one of those items where we'd highlight. However, in the condition that they're in, I really think that we would try and pull these items out and offer them together. Nice margins, but cut in a little bit at the bottom. These would pair well 
together because I don't think they would hold their own individually. So I pulled out the the three and the four from the collection. I've left this US number one in because I don't know if you can see it from here. I can bring this a bit closer. It's it's in pretty poor condition overall. It's very faded, uh, has a nick at the top. It cuts in kind of there. The, the margins are fair, but this is something that I'd leave in because again, as Charles mentioned, if you if you say you've got a US number one or a one on cover, it it kind of it gets people's attention. So it legitimizes the collection. It makes yeah. everything better. Individually, I think this US number one would probably sell for sixty to seventy dollars. It's not worth pulling out of the collection because it's something that that will entice people. Um, going further down, it looks like we've got a couple other US number ones. So this is a little cut in, but it it appears mint from the front. I'm having trouble focusing on the back, but it looks like it may have original gum traces. Um, Flip it. It's focused now. Yeah, it just it unfocuses yep. every time. Yep, you've also got to be careful. I don't again. I, I would not appraise or identify anything over no. a um, over a scan, but it could also be a um, uh, a card proof cut yes. down yeah. uh, and and sanded down, shaved down. Um, is also a possibility. So that's something that so, uh, if you're going to offer a number one with OG. This is something that would definitely need to be sent out. Yes. Yes. Um, there's. I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot of those in this collection. Um, we've got a good reputation with, with PSE and the, and the PF, Philatelic Foundation. So I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot of items in this kind of collection that if you're if you want to offer the best kind of right so 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 this is something i explain to consigners all the time yeah. when we send an item off to the philatelic foundation it will or or psc it will cost money yes we generally only send items off if the increase in hammer price will outweigh the cost of the certificate so if the certificate costs let's say a hundred dollars yeah. but we know the item is going to sell for 300 more dollars with the certificate then it is worth it to get that certificate if the cert will cost a hundred dollars then it'll only increase the value by fifty dollars then we're generally not going to send it out but I, I think you operate the same way that we send things out when we know it will be of a financial benefit to the uh, owner of the material exactly we have a i have a stack on my desk here not even looking at this collection i have a stack on my desk of about 40 items that are waiting for me to write up to send to the pf because it's it's so vital to have certificates for the items where it's completely necessary. Um, some items it's it's not so these are 10, 11, a number seven. You know they're not high enough catalog value where they would kind of warrant a certificate. Maybe even a number twelve. What doesn't really need with a number twelve? There's a there's really no question as to what it can be. You're getting a certificate to make sure that there's been no alterations, there's been no repairs, and that the, the stamp is in genuine sound condition. So something like this only would need a certificate if you want to make sure that nothing has been done to the stamp to make it look better than what it did originally. Um, something like this, honestly, I don't think we would, we would get a cert on. Um, yep, that looks like it could be offered on its own merits. Yes, uh, we would pull this out of the collection, wouldn't leave it in, but um, yeah, that uh, will leave for this first page. Second page here, looks like it can get a bit trickier. Um, you've of course got the one cent Franklins and the different uh, varieties of the perforated version. I'm going to take this out because for obvious reasons. It looks like this one too. Those are cut out of uh, an auction catalog it looks like. Yep. Makes <laughs> sense because those ones are incredibly... Actually, you know what? <laughs> there we go. Uh, that looks a lot better. <laughs> we'll skip this page. There we go. Here is the third page. Um, right off the bat, it, this these this kind of page is a lot more common for us to see filled. 
you've got the five cent Jeffersons. It doesn't look like we have the buff variety on this page. It may be a bit later in the collection. I uh, don't see it there either. Sorry. Um, but you've got the fancy cancels. So this, this collection, I'd go through and right off the bat without even looking at the catalog. This 71 I'd probably send out because it appears mint from the front. It's got no gum on the back, but mint no gum, I think, for a 71 might catalog around $900 off the top of my head. But could a cancellation have been removed, Michael? Exactly. Exactly. So I don't see any cancellation anywhere on this stamp, but it may have been removed at one point. And because there's no gum on the back of the stamp, it really makes it more difficult to tell. Um, if there was gum, it would be easier to kind of gauge if it was regummed. Maybe it's more likely to be a removed cancel or anything like that. So this some is something that I would probably pull out of the collection and see if I could get a certificate on it. As well as it looks like this number 69 here from this distance appears mint, no gum. Oh, never mind. As I got closer, you can kind of see very faintly. This is why it's it's important to look at things more close up. Looks like a green pen cancel. Either a faint cancel or someone had attempted to remove a cancel. You see it? Along the Barely flip it. Of the... Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can kind of see here. So I think I think this may be a scenario where someone at least had tried to remove a cancel. Or it was just the faintest of cancel in the first place. Yep, I see it though. Yep, yep. Um, it's much better when I put my hand up. Yep. Yep. So this page right off the bat, I, I'd probably take a look at pulling this stamp out. This one's very poorly centered, so I wouldn't. But this one is average for the, for the issue. I'd pull this one out and maybe a couple of, of these. The 90 cent is always popular and um, high catalog value. This, I believe, is a very low catalog value stamp, but the fancy star cancel may have me pulling the stamp out regardless. I'd have to really evaluate the condition of the stamp um, to see whether or not I'd pull it out to sell it for the merits of the fancy cancel anyway. Going to the next page. We've got grills. So, grill stamps are popular, but they can be faked. So, this is something where, again, a lot of the items, if you're seeing a really high catalog value, we would recommend sending items to, the, to get a certificate because it's very common to see a... a stamp that doesn't originally have a grill with a grill placed on it in order to increase the value of course so this uh, 100 here is upside down as I talked about earlier um, an upside down stamp in an album can sometimes mean there's a fault on it um, I'm not to the naked eye seeing any faults on this. Charles, would you, I know this is a tough to see over zoom, but maybe there's some reperfing on the bottom. It's so tough to tell over zoom. It, it's so tough to tell over zoom, but maybe on the bottom and on the left hand side, the perfs could be look a bit too clean. Flip it. Yeah, I would have to check it against a, yeah. against a gauge. So it's, it's really important to double check everything and just um, kind of educate yourself on how to tell these things up close and personal. So it's, it's hard to tell over zoom with the camera, you know, focusing in and out. But when we try to sell material online, we're really taking a photo of the front, the back through the light and in fluid if necessary to try and show absolutely everything with the stamp. So 
for this, um, it's a tough call. It's something that I may just leave in the collection because it's not well centered enough to dictate uh, getting a certificate on. Mm-hmm. Um, and and there is uh, something to be said for completeness as well, although it looks yes. like it's missing the five. But, but you can say, you know, uh, uh, right. grills to the 90 cent is a much better way of describing a collection than grills to the 15 cent or grills to the 24 cent. Right. Eighteen sixty nine pictorials, looks like a near complete scent to the ninety cent. So with these, when and some some possible mint, you got to check the back. So when evaluating a collection, and you've got the full set, what I tend to do is I pull the full set out. So although the catalog value on a lot of these is is decently high, especially the um, you know the twenty four and the thirty cent. And the 90 cent, although this is missing the 90 cent, I pull it out as a full set. I don't like to break these sets. I keep them intact unless the centering on one of the issues is particularly nice, which I'm not seeing here. The pictorials are always really poorly centered. So this, if it, I would leave in the collection. If it had the 90 cent, I would pull it out as a full set. We're now going to skip to the um, Colombians and the Trans Mississippi. Bear with me. Claire. Because the banknotes are way too much for us to get into on a podcast such as this. Exactly, and the um, Washington Franklins. We're going to scratch the surface here. Um, while flipping through pages, though, I am going to highlight. Oh, it's, it's a lighthouse light. album. Does that mean that commemoratives and definitives are yeah, separated? Yeah, they are. They're, um, but I did see the. Is that a 505 block? It is. It's actually two 505 blocks. Two so, five, the, the single and the double. So the single and the double. Um, so the 505s is a, is a five cent error printed in a sheet of two cents, and it comes in the different varieties. This is the top of the sheet here, as you can see the straight edge, uh, five cent single. And so this, this error occurred multiple times in the sheet. One of them yeah. was just one stamp on its own. Elsewhere on the sheet, it occurred in a uh, vertical pair. Uh, yeah. So you, these are very collectible in blocks of nine and blocks of 12 respectively, much more yeah. so than the individual stamp. Yes. So the Colombians, always yes. popular in any grade, in any condition. What have we got here? It looks like, because I'm seeing this for the first time too. Um, it looks like we've got a complete mint set here. So from the one cent to the $5, here I will just pull this $5 out. And I don't know if you saw as I was um, turning the pages just earlier. This is kind of hard to tell. Oh, there you go. So you can see the sheen off the back here. That gum. It, that's gum. So we had a certificate with the five. Uh, 1984 PF certificate, unused original gum. It is genuine. Uh, that's so this about- is before the days of them calling things never hinged or previously right. hinged. So right. you have to look closely to see whether it is NH or uh, I'm, don't ask me to do it over Zoom. No, I'm not, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not going to. Um, that, oh, you know, I'm trying to do it through the camera right now. That's super tough. Um, you want to be really careful with these because even the lightest of hinge marks um, can dramatically devalue the stamp. I'm not going to attempt... Let's not call it one way or the other on yes. camera. Mint original gum, $5 Colombian. Yes. So this definitely is the kind of item in a collection where I would typically how we sell these is I'd put the one cent to the 15 cent as a set. And then mm-hmm. I sell the 30 through the five 
each individually. I agree with that yeah. completely. Yeah. So uh, because you know we were talking about three and four, people want to buy them yeah. as a set, kill two birds with one stone. With yeah. Colombians, it's a lot different because the the quality. You know, people may have the one, three, and four dollar and be missing yeah. the two and the five. You generally don't buy dollar value Colombians as a set. I would say right. you really try to piece this together yourself, which is why offering from the 30 cent through the $5 individually is beneficial to both collectors and the consigner. Right. Especially mint. Um, you may yes. see people offer to the $5 used if they're in scattered condition, but um, especially mint, that's that's yeah, exactly what Charles said. Not fair to the consigner. Um, to try and offer that set intact mint. There's, a, you know, Colombians also, when you're spending that sort of money, you, you're probably going to um, buy them over uh, a lengthy amount of time. And, and, yes. and you know, n there's mint, much fewer people can buy a mint set of Colombians to the $5 yeah. than can buy the $1 one year and the $3 a couple of years later. That's generally a lifelong quest to complete a, a nice set. Yes. So Trans Mississippi, um, we'll tackle as the final item here because we could do this all day with the entire collection. Um, but I think going over some of the key items, obviously there were Zeppelins in the back, and that's something that regardless of of mint or used, something that, that we tend to pull out of collections because they're they're quite popular. And um, I, Getting into the weeds, I mean, we really find that if we leave a collection uh, together with the Zeppelins, the Zeppelins really only affect, and this is incredibly specific, affect the collection to the degree of six to seven hundred dollars where if we pull the zeppelins out sometimes we get between eight nine a thousand or if they're in nice mint condition upwards of uh twelve to fifteen hundred dollars for the zeppelins but they don't affect the collection to the degree that pulling the stamps out would so they tend to get lost. So what you're saying is if a set of Zeppelin sells for $500, it does not increase the value of the collection $500 generally. Right, right. right. If the <clears throat> if the Zeppelins are pristine, mint, never hinged, massive margins, they're not going to, to affect the overall price of the collection to the degree that the Zeppelins would sell for individually. So it's always better to pull them out. Um Two dollar Trans Mississippi. I'd say this is average to fair centering for this issue. They're typically poorly centered, but the top margin. The two dollar uh, is much tougher to find well centered than the yeah. one dollar. I would say it's also um, it's also not oxidized. A lot of times, those yeah. RNG brownie stamps from the late nineteenth, early twentieth century are really affected by it's not oxidation. You'll get somebody yeah. very much more semantic than myself who will correct you. It's it's commonly referred to as oxidation, even though it's a different chemical process but this one looks quite bright and fresh there is something going on with the gum there it looks yeah, like definitely can't call it never hinged um no, but, no. Uh, but it but it, but it is og yep and it is um yeah again th those don't come all that nicely centered generally it's got rich color it's got og it's a good looking stamp yeah, so this is something that we'd we'd pull out of the collection, and then and then again, maybe offer the the one through uh, ten cent as a set, and the fifty yep. cent on its own or something. Exactly, exactly. And then you got the the Pan Americans here that we'd offer uh, the one to the ten cent as a full set. What's Pan the most expensive value in that set, Michael? Is it not the, the ten cent. cent? No, it's, it's the eight, eight cent. It's the eight cent. The eight cent's the toughest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of a trick question yeah um so yeah that that was this u.s collection um again we could we could do sit here and do this all day with the entire collection but it's can I ask you a question michael y you can can we do an episode in a couple of weeks when these things are listed on ebay to see what they or after they've sold on ebay to see what they went for yes yes we can um we're actually going to be putting this into a catalog um you know we've been putting those catalogs together We've got a couple other U.S. material um, items that we want to put together in one kind of large U.S. sale. So we can take a look. This will probably this collection probably won't be up for another two to three months. Um, That's fantastic. We can do it then. Yeah, that because there are a couple items in here going through this that we do want to send out to to the PF or to PSE to to make sure that they are what they are and that um, 
you know, that, 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 that they make the right price. So this will be something that we will pull apart and create into a larger catalog. Well, again, once that's live, let's go through and see if we can spot any familiar faces from this collection and, and see how they've been described and what they sell for. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, there you are. <laughs> yeah, You're spotlighted. Here. Yeah. Spotlit. Spotlit. The technical yeah. term. Um, yes, yeah, so that was that that was that US collection. It kind of that's how you uh, the thought process behind us breaking the collection down. It's not simply just is this stamp $200 catalog value? Yes, let's pull it out. You really got to evaluate right. the condition. You got to evaluate the market. The, the thing like that we had talked about, people like buying the 1 cent to the 15 cent to Colombian. Now, right. if you've got a mint 5 cent Colombian catalog, uh, I think 200 250 but it's you should leave it in the set because that's a how lot. the market likes you're, to buy what, it what i have to explain to people and what you're what you're getting at is that there's no strict set of rules as to right. what gets pulled out if you have a a, a perfect one cent first bureau that's perfectly centered mm -hmm. with original gum you're going to pull that out but if you have yeah. a one cent first bureau that's used and off center that's not worth yeah. much of anything really yeah. so yeah pe people always want to know what are the rules what are the, the hard and fast mm -hmm. um you know uh, rubrics for what comes out of a collection what stays in a collection yeah. it's an art not a science so exactly. the phrase i used in my episode and i think it applies equally to your episode where yeah. you have to do this for a while you have to see a bunch of collections and then you just sort of get a feel for what the market can bear on its own versus mm -hmm. what the market would you know would, would respond to better as part of a collection it's a trial and error if you're starting out but People like us, where we've been doing this a significant amount of time, that's essentially what you're paying for. By significant, for. You, mean a, you mean a couple of years versus people who have been doing it for a couple of decades. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree with you, Michael. That is what you're paying for. Yeah. That's, um, you, th th this, you know, you know, why do you charge a commission? Why do you? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to pay these fees? Why do I? Why don't I get? Uh, you know, this is what you're paying for. Why can't I that, just do it myself? And, and exactly, and, exactly. We get people all the time. I explain to them that you know we want we will sell your collection, but it'll cost this much. And they say, no, I'm good. I'm just going to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And then they call us back a month or two later. And say I want to consign stuff to you guys because it's too hard. That that is what the the um, commission that you pay when you go to auction. Mm -hmm whether it's eBay auction or, um, you know, uh, traditional auction, traditional auctions, um, you are paying for that expertise. You're paying for the people who've been doing it much longer than you and I have been doing mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and again, the things you can only learn from having experienced it over and over again. So yeah. I hope and that's what we've been able go ahead, dedicate their entire lives to us. Just, just like, you know, the, the two of us who've been doing this a much, again, a much longer time than, than we have. And that's what, the hobby relies on these people who know how to market the collections to the collectors. If it was a, all the collectors tried to sell the material themselves, it would be a much different marketplace. Collectors may have a much more difficult time trying to buy material that they're looking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I hope these last two episodes were informative. Give us feedback. Let us know what you think. Yeah. We'd love to hear uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, or if you want us to go back to, uh, interviewing somebody different every week because we'd like to mix it up and you know yeah. again keep the interviews obviously as the basis We've got of the show but incredibly exciting interviews coming up we do we yeah. do um i don't want to share them yet no no, no. but right. um we do we, again we're not straying away from that but we do want to mix it up and try out new things if you like this let us know if you didn't like this let us know yeah um but you can check us out as always apple google spotify podcasts youtube uh, flatlypodcast.com, flatlypodcast at gmail.com, Michael J. Court on Twitter, Charles L. Epting on Twitter. Reach out to us. Let us know if you want more of this, if you want less of this. Either way, we love hearing from you. Yep. And uh, Michael, these last two episodes have been really fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you all for watching and see you next time. Hit the subscribe button. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.